I'm Dr. Annette. I'm a naturopathic doctor, board certified. Oh gosh, like around, I don't know, 2015-ish, I think. I don't remember exactly when I did that. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a minute. And one of the things that I really, really am passionate about is, first of all, helping people understand how their bodies work. And secondly, helping them like benefit from understanding all of those things. But I also want to make sure that you're living your best life. So if you're dealing with a lot of stress and that's affecting how the rest of your life is working, which we'll get into here in a minute, then I'm one of those people that likes to teach you ways to combat the effects of having that going on in your life as well. So again, if you're new, I um, like to talk about all the things health. I want a holistic approach, like mind, body, spirit, so to speak. I want to make sure that you are functioning on all cylinders at the best possible way that you can. And I have a huge female following. There are a few men who have recently joined the group. So if you're one of those, you may not find this discussion all that interesting. But if you're married, or have a significant other who is female, then maybe you will. Maybe you'll find this to be helpful to them. So welcome to everyone. And um, say hi, let me know that you can see me and hear me. It looks like there are a couple people, I can only see them on my phone, I can't see them on the computer. So let's get started. So um, I posted earlier this week that there was no such thing as balancing your hormones and that's kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing because it's difficult to balance something that's intended to fluctuate that's like saying you're going to balance the ocean the balance is usually considered like making something level or similar or you know in control and unfortunately Hormones are not that easy. They're like the ocean. They're different, different and they ebb and flow and they're supposed to do that. That's how they're designed. And women have over 50 hormones that work together inside of their bodies. Men probably have about the same amount, so I'm not leaving you guys out, but we're specifically talking about female hormones here on this particular video. Hormones work together with proteins and fats to make the things happen. There's enzymatic effects, there's all these things, and I don't wanna to get too deep in the weeds with big words that will confuse the situation, so I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple as I possibly can. So there's no, th no such thing as balancing your hormones because they're meant to ebb and flow and fluctuate. They're also meant to work together, and one hormone doing something might mean this hormone does something different or vice versa. They might take turns being higher, like cortisol versus melatonin. So cortisol helps you wake up in the morning. Melatonin helps you go to sleep at night. So if you can't have high cortisol and high melatonin at the same time, and by high, I mean normal for that time of day. Also, stress hormones like cortisol can affect other systems in the body, like your blood sugar regulating system, insulin and blood sugar, as well as your sleep hormones like melatonin. And having high stress hormones can also affect your sex hormones as well, because the body uses the same raw materials to make cortisol as it does to make female hormones. So the body uses raw materials to put things together. And if your cortisol is using up all of this one piece to the puzzle, then your body can't make like progesterone, for example. And if your body can't make progesterone, then your cycle can't fluctuate the way it's supposed to, which leaves you in a bad way with mood and uh, cycles that are a little out of whack and all of the things. So that's just like a basic hormone understanding. So hormones ebb and flow. Some are meant to be high when others are low and they're supposed to take turns. Estrogen and progesterone do this as well as, as cortisol and melatonin. 
and insulin and blood sugar, which was typically called glucose. Glucose is not a hormone, by the way. It's just a raw material that the body uses to create energy inside the cell. So science lesson done, I hope. Um, so basically, first of all, women have four-ish stages of hormone levels. You have your premenopause, which is where you're cycling, typically from around the early teen years up until perimenopause kicks in. It's different for everyone. Some people find after they have a few children that perimenopause starts to kick in. I personally believe that's because having children depletes your nutrient levels and our society is not good at making sure those nutrient levels are reestablished. Um, so if you've just, if you're young and you're having perimen perimenopause symptoms already, it's probably nutritionally deficit because of having babies and your nutrients being utilized for that process and not being replenished. So that's one topic, but we go from premenopause, which is before you hit menopause. And then there's perimenopause, which is the situation that you're in which is sort of like having an ADHD teenager where, you know, am I gonna have a cycle this month? Am I not gonna have a cycle this month? Oh, maybe I'll just have two cycles this month. Or maybe this whole month will just be one big long cycle. And by cycle, I mean period. So that can cause all kinds of issues as well. You can get low iron, get really tired. And I mean, anybody who's had a period that lasted longer than it was supposed to will probably agree with me that it makes you pretty grumpy. I mean, yeah, who wants to do that for a whole month? Not me. So uh, I won't go into the medical response to that and how they handle those things, but um, menopause is when you finally made it a whole year without having a period. So how many of you have gone six months, maybe nine months, and then boom, Hi, Mother Nature says you're not done yet. And that usually happens when you're pretty sure that you're done. You're never going to have another period. And here you are in white pants at a family picnic. And somebody says, there's something on your pants. How embarrassing. Oops, you're not prepared. You don't have stuff in your purse to deal with that. You don't have spare clothes in the car. You're not a young mom. When I was a young mom, I always carried an extra pair of pants for myself. Because when I had a child, I never knew what was going to happen to my clothes or when I was going to start my period because my cycles were nuts. So there's that. And then you finally go a whole year without a period. And if you're lucky, you haven't started having hot flashes yet. But then soon after that, here come the hot flashes. Now, some people have a medical reason for going into menopause, which is like an ablation or a hysterectomy. And... Typically, doctors try really hard to leave your ovaries and things like that so that you're actually still having female cycles because estrogen is good for you to have in your body and a lack of estrogen is tied to a lot of the things that happen to most older women and they don't want you having those symptoms when you're 25 and just had to have a hysterectomy because of some sort of other situation. So they try to leave your hormones intact when they do those, but they're not always able to do that. It depends on the situation. If you have endometriosis or any of those things, then sometimes they take out all the equipment and then you're thrown immediately into postmenopause, which is uh, pretty shocking for someone who's young. Um, it's honestly, the United States has the worst menopause, postmenopause symptoms of any country in the world because our diets are laid in with GMO, sugar, we eat garbage, we don't get enough exercise, we don't drink good, clean water. Most of our water has fluoride and chlorine and all of the things in it. So our bodies are not healthy when we get to menopause. Therefore, when we hit postmenopause, it's difficult to have a smooth transition because of all of the things that we consume, all of the things that we're exposed to, toxins, living lives that are super high, and stress and all of the things. So if you are 